One thing you'll hear or you'll see referred to a lot is something called a flow chart, either in computer science or really when people talk about any type of algorithm or process. And what I thought I would do is for every program I write is write a little simple flow chart. Maybe I won't do it for everyone, but I'll start with some of the basic ones, just so we understand that a flow chart really isn't anything fancy. So in this factorial program that we had been looking at the last couple of videos, so let me, any flow chart is just going to be kind of with the starting point, which is usually started, I guess, depicted with a circle or an oval of some kind. So we start, you can kind of view it as we're starting at this line above this assignment of the number where we actually ask for an input from, a from the user. And then after that, after that, we ask for input from the user. This line right here, we are asking for input from the user. So this right over here. And we will depict that by a parallelogram. So that is input from the user. And then we could just say number number equals user input. User input. And you can be a little bit loosey-goosey with the terminology here. You're really just trying to say what you're doing at this step. The parallelogram tells us that we are somehow interfacing with the user. We're either taking something from the user, or we're outputting something to the user. So here, we're saying user input is equal to number. We're assigning number as the user input. Then the next thing we do is just a straight up operation. We just set product to be equal to 1. So we just set, and there we just do that in a rectangle. Product equals 1. Product, product is equal to 1. And then something interesting is, is going to happen. We enter into our for loop. And we start with, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write it a little bit different than we wrote it over here. So what we do is we start a, what we're doing is we're going to start our for loop essentially with an assignment, where we assign. For loop is really a bunch of things happening at the same time. It assigns uh, i to the first number in the sequence, and then it te or it tests whether it can assign i to the first number in the sequence. If it can, then it proceeds. If it can't, then it breaks out of the for loop. So let me put it this way. I will do, this, I will do kind of a test case right over here. So items left in sequence. So items items left in sequence. And when I'm referring to the sequence, I'm talking about this sequence here, the range of our number. In the case, in the example I gave in the last video, the number was 3. So items left in this sequence. I know it's hard to read right over here. If there are, so let's say that there are items left in sequence. So if there are items left in sequence, so we'll just say i is equal to next item. i is equal to next. i is equal to the next item. If there are, well, I'll just I'll just hold off for the case where there are no items left in the sequence. But let's say that there are. i is equal to the next item. And then we also define, we define product to be, we define product. Actually, I wanted to do these in blue, just our regular, our regular. So let me write this as yes. If there are items in the sequence, then then i is equal to the next item is equal to the next item. That's one operation we do. And then we, set, we reset product. We reassign product to be equal to what the former value of product was times, times i plus 1. Times i plus 1. Times i plus 1. And at this point, and at this point, we essentially, we loop back to this test over here. So at this point, we loop back. I'll try to write it neatly. We loop back to, let me do it right over here. We loop back to this point in the program. That's why it is called a loop. Because after you perform, after you perform this operation, this is embedded in the loop, you go back to the beginning to see if there's any more of the loop to do. So you go back to the beginning, before the loop, and you say, hey, are there any items in the sequence? And this should be a question mark over here. These kind of question mark decision points are you, you specify with this diamond. If there is another item in the sequence, then i is equal to the next item, and product is equal to what product was, plus times i plus 1. And we go to the next. Are there items left in the sequence? And at some point, there won't be any items left in the sequence. So there won't be, at some point, there won't be any items left in the sequence. And we could go to the right, or I'll just break out of it down here. I'll just break out of it down here. And now we've broken out of this for loop. We've broken out of this for loop. And then the next thing we do, once we're done with our for loop, is we just print the, the value of product. 
We just output the value of product. So that is an interaction with the user. So we are literally just outputting the value of product. So we output, output product, and we are done. And I can write end for the end of my for the end of our program, and the program will stop running. End. So this is just a simple flowchart for this simple program, and hopefully it helps you appreciate that one well one a little understanding of the program itself if the last two videos didn't help too much, and it also gives you a simple understanding of how to write a flowchart.